Good morning, church. It's May the 4th, and we are in Matthew 23, verses 13 through 33. This is a long um, passage, so I'm going to jump around. And these are the seven woes that Jesus uh, pronounces on the Pharisees. But woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you shut the kingdom of heaven in people's faces, and you neither enter yourselves nor allow those who would enter to come in. Continuing on in verse 29, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites, for you Build the tombs of the prophets and decorate the monuments of the righteous, saying, If we had lived in the days of our fathers, we would not have taken part with them in the shedding of the blood of the prophets. Thus, you witness against yourselves that you are sons of those murderers, the murderers of the prophets. Fill up then the measure of your fathers. You serpents, you brood of vipers, how are you to escape being sentenced to hell? This is a heavy passage. Jesus is nearing the uh, end of his ministry. He's told his disciples that he is, is going to the cross and he's got this business with the religious leaders, the scribes and the Pharisees. There were about 600 or so Pharisees. They were primarily the middle class people and not all of them were bad. We know that Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus were two good Pharisees. So he has these th series of woes and woes are, it's hard to translate from the Greek word, we get two senses. We get a sense of wrath and we get a sense of sorrow. So Jesus is pronouncing wrath, but he's also sorry for them. You see, the Pharisees were very much concerned with the outward of following the law, the ceremonial laws. First, they, had all, they weighed people down with all of these rules and regulations, so much so that even the proselytes, those drawing near to God, couldn't enter his kingdom. The burden was just too great. He had to re-educate, Jesus had to re-educate them on their understanding of vows. They were, they used evasion he had to educate them on their understanding of what was clean and unclean. He had to educate them on their understanding of tithes, tithing. Jesus was not against tithing. Jesus was trying to get them to understand that they were neglecting the weightier things like mercy and justice and righteousness. And they were so busy trying to define their own righteousness by keeping the law that they were blinded to the righteousness that God was trying to teach them through his son, Jesus. Jesus calls them several times blind guides. It was funny to those hearing it, but it was very insulting to them. And yet, they were following suit with their fathers, not their literal fathers, but Jesus, by calling them serpents, brood of vipers, he's equating them with their father, the devil. We know that the thief comes to kill and steal and destroy, but Jesus says in John 10, 10, but I have come that they may have life and have it to the full. These Pharisees were so busy with the outward observances of the law that they became blinded to the righteousness of God. Jesus is the end of the law. 
and those who are obeying him, keeping his commandments, uh, following him, worshiping him in spirit and truth, those will be the ones that enter the kingdom of heaven. And so Jesus is warning the Pharisees and pronouncing sentence on them. And we know that they take part in his crucifixion. Let us try to take from this that we don't want to get caught up in man's traditions and man's rules and observing a lot of minor things that really just get in the way of our true piety with God, our true reverence for God. This is a heavy passage and it's hard to find encouragement from it, but just know that if you are following God earnestly through a relationship with his son, that you don't have to worry about these woes, these oracles of God's judgment. God bless you. Have a great day.